Good evening. I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order. It's the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission's uh, Monday, uh, July 11th, 20, uh, 2022 meeting. Before we begin, I'd like to uh, request just a, a moment of silence for uh, Army Armin Frenchy Menard. Uh, Frenchy had been a, a member of this commission for uh, many years, and uh, Frenchy recently passed away. So again, I'd just like to have a moment of silence for uh, Frenchy. Thank you very much. And now if we'd all please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And at this point in time, I'd like to introduce the members of the commission that are here this evening. To my uh, far right is uh, Jamie Hine, who is an alternate on the commission. Next to Jamie is Jeff Cohan, a uh, commission member. And uh, next to uh, Jeff is uh, James, uh, James Fitzsimmons, also a commission member. To my immediate left is J.P. Vinoint, the uh, vice chairperson of the commission. Next to J.P. is Steve Allenson, who is the secretary. And next to Steve is David Parent, who is an alternate on the commission. At our staff table, uh, to my left is Cheryl Ann Tubby, our recording secretary, and next to Cheryl Ann is Kevin Pagini, who is our uh, town planner. And at this point in time, I'd entertain uh, a motion for consideration of our minutes of our June 13th, 2022 meeting. Uh, any commission members that would uh, like to make a motion and or make any uh, corrections, adjustments to the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the uh Wine for Planning and Zoning Commission minutes of June 13th, 2022. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, moving on to our first order of business is a public hearing. It's a, a special permit uh, residential building for V. Di Natale, 350 Center Street. Uh, Mr. Secretary, if you please uh, read the legal notice and then note all correspondence for the record while the applicant's uh, beginning to prepare for his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Number 404-22, special permit for Vincenzo Di Natale to construct an eight-unit residential apartment building and a reduction of required parking spaces at 350 Center Street, TC, Town Center District. We have a memorandum to the Planning and Zoning Commission dated May 31st, 2022. We have an inter-office memorandum from Scott Shipman, Junior Engineer, to Kevin Pagini, Town Planner, dated June 2nd, 2022. We have an interdepartmental referral from our Fire Marshal, date of receipt May 9th, 2022. We have a memorandum from Allison Kapashinsky, our town engineer, dated June 24th, 2022. We have a set of site plans, date of receipt, June 7th, 2022. A parking plan, date of receipt, June 9th, 2022. And I believe that is all. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Allenson. If the applicant would please uh, introduce himself and begin his presentation. And if you would, sir, just make sure that the microphone's pulled very close to you so we can pick up uh, all of your comments. Good evening. Um, my name is Vincenzo Di Natale. I'm here with my team members, Peter and Tegan. Uh, just as a formality, I just wanted to mention on behalf of our architect, if you'd like to. Yeah, so the plan. Excuse me, does Peter and Tegan have a last name? <laughs> My team members, Peter Di Natale and Tegan Farrell. <laughs> Thank you. And then and, uh, we were supposed to be joined by architect tonight, but just on his behalf, you want to? Yes, uh, the architect, Sam Sargent of Lazarus and Sargent Professional Architects, who uh, couldn't attend this meeting because of exposure to COVID. So someone will be reading his, his part on his behalf. Thank you. 
Good evening. Um, we are pleased to be here before you tonight with an application for a residential building in the town center district. Um, and we've, um, there's been a lot of effort on this project, including uh, the efforts of uh, Sam Sargent, um, who couldn't be here with us. I think in order to understand our application um, and how we came up with this proposal, it's important to go back to 2016. As you're aware, the state of Connecticut requires uh, the town of Wallingford to prepare a plan of development and renew it every 10 years. Um, at that point in time, our plan was, the development was, the plan of development was prepared with specific notes about the town center. And just to quote, said to catalyze high quality redevelopment and investment and high occupancy in the town center. Shortly after the plan of development was adopted by this commission, and many of you were uh, on that board, um, regulations were adopted, and specifically in 2018. Those regulations, and not to read you the whole thing, encourages development and redevelopment in that zone. Um, we have an application before you that we believe is consistent with the plan of development and meets the guidelines of the town center regulations. Um, my team will be presenting some information on this application, and I'd just like to say as a side note that we also took the time to meet with um, all of our neighbors, um, and they, they took a lot of time to, to walk the site with us, give us their feedback, and uh, we specifically we had met with Michael Tisha, who's the owner of the, the um, where is the building, that, where his business is, Mr. Kaplan, as well as Mr. Rick Termini. Um, we also have, have had many meetings with the town staff to look at different options and, um, and some of the dynamics that um, were involved in this application. So with that said, I would like to uh, yield to Mr. Peter D'Intelli. There should be just a, a button to switch uh, on the handle, just if you make sure it's turned on, please. Not yet. Hello? Here we go. Hello, my name is Peter Di Natale, and I will be discussing uh, traffic flow surrounding uh, the proposed residential building, which is in this area. So the map in front of you shows uh, the current existing properties, which are all in blue, three different access points, which are noted in yellow, and the proposed residential building, which can be seen in light green. Um, there is also a uh, fire and pedestrian access point uh, noted here in red. So there are currently three existing access points, as you can see here. The first two are between uh, Cafe Ra and 350 Center Place, um, and they're located beneath the uh, underpass. Um, one is a designated entrance, the one closer to Cafe Ra, and the other is a designated uh, exit. Actually, those are actually swapped. So this is the entrance, this is the exit. Um, the other access point, which is currently an entrance, is between uh, the wine shop uh, and Za'an Thai House, and that's currently an entrance to the, uh, the property here. Um, the town engineer recently pointed out an issue that exists with this uh, current setup, and it has to do with the traffic flow on Center Street. Um, so currently, as cars wait behind the intersection, as noted here by the traffic light, um, a line of vehicles usually forms along the street, uh, which then blocks these two access points, as cars who need to get into this property uh, try to access those points. Um, the proposed building will fix this issue by turning these two access points into designated exits from the property, and this uh, access point will stay a, uh, the only access point as an entrance to the property. Um, and that will make it so that cars are no longer uh, needed to turn into the property uh, at this location, which is closer to the intersection, um, and it'll cause uh, fewer traffic jams in that area. Um, 
So the improvement also includes, like I said earlier, a fire and pedestrian access right here. Um, and to ensure that there's uh, no vehicles moving through this location, there will be bullards put up uh, to prevent that from happening. So that's all I had to share. Thank you. All right, I'm Tegan. Uh, I'm now going to talk about the proposal's effects on the parking lot, uh, which is all of this white space, as you can see here. Uh, so currently, there are 42 parking spaces available on the property. And the proposed building would require, uh, or it would increase the required number of spaces to 58. So to make up for this difference, however, uh, you can use shared parking. The, Current 42 spaces for these buildings, which are both office and residential. Uh, the 42 spaces are in this area, and they're used for Cafe Ra through all of those up to the new proposed building. Um, and because they are both office and residential, uh, it means a large portion of the parking demands will not be at overlapping times, as office employees only need to park during the day and residents primarily need to park at night. Uh, according to current regulations, this drops the required number of spaces down to 41, showing that the overall demand for parking spaces can be met uh, by these shared spaces. Additionally, the installation of a bike rack on the side of the proposed building right here uh, would further reduce the number to 40. Therefore, the parking lot will actually exceed the requirements with this new proposed building. Uh, our proposal includes several overall improvements to the parking lot as well. Currently, the parking spaces are smaller than the standard allows. Uh, the new parking lot would increase the quality of these spaces by enlarging them to the nine foot wide regulation. Two new handicap spaces would uh, also be added, which you probably can't see, but they are here and here. Uh, additionally, some old concrete structures and utility poles have already been removed from the property, making the parking lot easier to drive through and more visually appealing. Storm drainage would also be greatly enhanced by improving the gradient of the parking lot in some areas. And lastly, the bike rack would uh, hopefully contribute to an overall decrease in the number of cars on the property as well. Uh, also, if you have been back there and seen the parking lot, and especially where this new proposed building would go, does not look great right now. This building would make the area and parking lot much cleaner, uh, more hospitable, and would greatly improve part of our town center. Now I'm going to move on to the plans for the actual building, uh, which Peter will come up and grab a new board for us. And again, these plans were developed by Lazarus and Sargent, and so I'll be going over the plan in Sargent's absence. The building that we have designed for this site is a companion building to the new one on Wallace that is currently under construction. That was the dark green piece of paper, if you remember from the other board. Um, and the colors and materials are similar, but with the addition of two other types of siding to differentiate it, uh, which you might be able to see, there's the difference between the east and west sides. Uh, this south-facing side here is also what you would see if you were standing on Center Street and facing the building, just to clarify the orientation. And the building is three stories with a full basement and contains eight apartments. The first floor contains two type A accessible apartments, one two bedroom unit and one one bedroom unit. Both are accessible at the front of the building and have a small space outside at the rear of the building. Also on the first floor is stair access to the units on the second floor and access to the basement. The second floor corridor is the entrance level for six two-story apartments. 
the first level of these apartments having the kitchen and living areas and the apartment bedrooms on the second level or the third floor of the building. Two of these apartments are two bedroom units and the other four are one bedroom units, all with bedrooms on the third floor. Uh, and that concludes that part of the presentation. If you have any questions, you can let us know. At this point in time, any uh, commission members with uh, questions for either one of these gentlemen or if not, if Mr. Dean Natale would like to continue. Just to add something that was said already from uh, both these guys, uh, what we've been able to accomplish has been because of the cooperation of the neighbors. Um, he, they talked about the traffic flow and the changing of the traffic flow to, to resolve a problem at that intersection, which might not have been apparent. But if cars are queuing and cars are trying to turn in on the entrance, if you want to put that other board up there. So you mentioned if they're trying to turn into the underpass and they wait, a, car, a stack of cars two or three deep will go into the main intersection of Center Street and Main. So um, the town engineer suggested that we make the dedicated entrance further away, which is between the Zion and the Wine Spirit Shop there, uh, close to Wallace. Um, so we thought that was a good suggestion. We incorporated our plan. We also brought that to all the neighbors because as you are aware, there's, it's, a, it's kind of a share. They're all able to crisscross and uh, we walked through with each of them and they were very pleased with the reorientation of the parking flow. So um, that was very helpful. The neighbors have always been through every step of the process, even way back when we looked at the plan of development years ago and regulations were being changed and been very supportive. Also, which Tegan had mentioned earlier, some of the parking lot, although it doesn't look very pretty right now, there's been a, a lot of work that's been done with the utilities, a major undertaking. And it, if it had not been for Wallingford having our own utility company with the leadership of Tony Bucari, we would not be here with an application. The property years ago was owned by the town of Wallingford, uh, the former town hall. And so the different departments took liberties with the utility poles and crisscrossing of wires. Well, once that went into the private sector, there was poles and wires and no easements and it became very complicated. And so possibly two or three years of work planning with Tony Bucari and his team to get everything buried underground. Keep in mind, not only did we take the Wallingford for electric li lines, there were uh, communication lines, specifically Crown and Castle, which services cell towers in the area, Frontier Communications, as well as Comcast. So, there's been a lot of work that's been happening, and, um, and we're very pleased with where we've gotten so far. Thank you. Again, commission members, uh, questions for the applicant. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, I am uh, uh, very familiar with this site, and uh, I actually happened to notice, I think it was the day that the telephone poles were being removed from the rear. Um, so again, you can see the, the work that, that's going on. Um, I am in favor of the um, proposed layout and, and the parking. I just, looking at your map, the yellow, the yellow are the driveway points. Correct. Which one is widest? Are the exits wider than the entrance? As I, as I look at that, I'm trying to, because I, you know, the one that's going to become the entrance between the liquor store and the restaurant, is that more narrow than the two exits? Actually, the others appear to be wider, um, but they're very close. And the one that is between, which will be the main entrance, is 12 to 13 feet wide. And we, we actually, so we were wondering about that, and um, we looked up, did some research on the dimensions of a garbage truck. Oh, sure. Um, which is, I think you did that, <laughs> nine feet, typically nine feet wide. So we'll, you know, we'll, those are the most unusual, right? right? So they'll be able to access the site, which actually, well, they had no choice in the past because they couldn't go under the other pass. 
Um, sure. But there'll be plenty of room for them to access that site. Um, the, another thing that should be mentioned, which is in the works, there's tremendous cooperation in this corner. And um, our neighbor to the north, Mr. Kaplan, has taken initiative, besides cooperating with the electric lines, to get us all together to combine dumpsters. So likely, there will not be any garbage trucks needed to go into that site. The, the, um, the idea is that, you know, obviously we all remember what's happened the last few years, but in the area behind um, the Michael's restaurant and the soon-to-be Knuckles, Knucklehead's restaurant, they're using that as outdoor patio. So we're trying to get some of these vehicles away from areas that they could use for somewhat of a public space. The other question I had, so, so you've answered the driveway question. So if I'm not mistaken, the soon-to-be entrance only is not currently available. Is that right? Because of the construction and back? Correct, correct. Okay, so yeah. something I haven't driven down that because it's, it's blocked off. So someone mentioned bollards. Where are the bollards gonna be? So if you wanna point that out, Peter, and so what we're doing with the bollards, and this, this was a right. meeting that we had on site with the fire chief and the fire marshal. Um, okay. Go ahead. Off the wall. So there'll okay. be, that will be a pedestrian, a full pedestrian access and emergency vehicle access. And what they refer to as the choke bollards, where you see them on choke campus, they're in the ground, uh -oh. easily removed. And that meets their standards. So okay. that was something that we could encourage. Already, even with the construction, we have a lot of pedestrian traffic there. So this would <laughs> continue to encourage the traffic um, and allow safe passage for emergency vehicles. And then I, I guess my last question is more of a vision thing. So you did show architecturals, which would be similar to what's being built at now informally Wallace Realty, right? And so the new built, right? Yes. That's the name of the... The other ones, and then the the this building would be have a similar look. Is there a, ever, or is it on the long term plan or short term plan to change the facade at 350 Center, or is or is that always going to be as is and leave these residential look for the new buildings and leave the 350 yeah. frontage? It, it's a no, just a, I, just a question. I'm just curious more. Not a very attractive building. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's um and our hope is to take a closer look at that it's unusual construction we're still looking at that carefully as we do a conversion um there's some options like putting a different facade across the granite i did find a picture when it was town hall in full force and so what we have today is a it's definitely an improvement what had been there in the past was an unusual building. Um, so we're looking at some facade improvements where you have the brick, which we think fits into the neighborhood because some of the other buildings, like namely like the, the, the Farrell and Kuchowski office has it. Uh, Mr. Dean Natale, yep. please pull that a little bit. Closer. So we were, if you, we are looking at the facade and hopefully doing some improvements. 350 Center Street is a mixture of granite and brick. We feel the brick does have some connection. There's a nice, one of the nice brick buildings is the office of Farrell Wachowski, which is across the street. Um, the granite is a little out of place. So we're, we're trying to, you know, it doesn't look like an office, doesn't look like, I'm not sure what, yeah, it's unusual, we're trying. Okay, I, I appreciate the, the answer. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Other commission members? Mr. Cohen. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I do like the project as well. I do think it absolutely enhances the town center and, you know, this, this does uh, uh, correspond to our uh, POCD as far as improving downtown. Um, so I, I, I do like the overall plan. I am a little confused though on, on the parking. Um, to, to, to access the parking, it, it's only going to be from Center Street. You, you can't, you know, get into this parking area from from the back side if you go down Wallace Row. 
And is, is that the only? Correct. The access will be from Center Street and o emergency only vehicles. And it's deceiving now because if you're at the brewery and look at there's there's a, it's open. Right. 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 And so we, th this is your parking area, and correct. Nobody else. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that so that driveway will be that emergency and pedestrian flow. Right. And we thought that was the best option to encourage. There's a really good vibe in the back there, probably partly, mostly responsible to the brewery and the, the outdoor seating and the, and the pedestrian traffic. So we thought we would keep that as a pedestrian friendly access. Okay. Um, and, then, and just the last comment, the, um, the, the you know, two exits underneath. Yes. Um, I mean, they've been there for, for decades. Um, do you actually need both of those for exits? I mean, no, and it, it's likely that the goal actually would be we don't need them both. Um, they're both under the underpass and covered, and it, con it confuses everybody. Um, the goal would be that the, on the west side where it abuts um, the current business is Cafe Ra, that we can expand the outdoor seating. So it's okay. likely seasonally that that would be closed, right? And that, that would, yeah, there's, it, there's too many. We would just expand the seating and maybe put some gates there and then open it periodically. But there is no good reason to leave it open. There are neighbors there, and I'd have to look carefully before I committed to shutting it completely. But, um, but that's what you might find that it's actually closed. And that would be the goal, is, is just more outdoor seating. Great answer. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because basically I was going to say, you know, have you thought of a better, better use? And it sounds like you have. So Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohan. Other commission members? Just a, a couple of quick questions. You know, when I'm looking, I know you mentioned it's a three-story building. When I'm looking at the plans, though, where it shows the proposed building, you know, first floor, it's uh, 2,945, second floor, 3,339, but there's nothing on the plans for the third floor. It just, if you, if you looked at these plans, you'd say this is yeah. a two-story building, but obviously it's a three-story building. Yes, and actually the other drawing that he has is probably, um, yeah, uh, so, Three-story building, correct. The first level being the two type A handicap units. Um, and just to do it, to sidetrack for a moment, the type A means that they are handicap ready, not mm -hmm. just accessible. So there's, you know, sure. the moment you see how, so, the, but in the area, I'm not sure if Peter, you can see some numbers on that drawing, but there's, so there's, the, the basement area isn't relevant. There should be three, uh, calculations on that drawing, but I apologize. Yeah, I just—I I guess my my point would be just on the plans. If if we just have those, just just have the Clarified. the dimension, have it floor one, two, three, and just have the dimensions on the plans that we have. Because again, if you're looking at the plans here, yes, you know, you're looking and it just shows, you know, first floor, second floor, and obviously, it's three it's three stories. Uh, the other thing, if you could just talk about the fencing that's around the uh, property. I guess I think we all know right now, you know, it's uh, rather tired. Yes. Uh, so what are you planning on doing with that? That'll happen before the facade gets changed. <laughs> um, so, and actually, Peter, if you want to point out the, the fence that really, so if you start from the, the new building there, and then, yes, and then along, there's that one section that's really relevant that is along the, northern boundary line that extends from the corner of the green building to Kaplan's property. And that's the next step that we intend to replace. We'll probably leave some openings because of the combined trash situation. Um, the other fence which surrounds that won't be necessary just because of the orientation. It'll be more decorative. It's, it's gonna serve a different purpose. But the main one that we intend, that needs to be resolved is along the northern property line where um, I think at this point, amongst the neighbors, we would continue with a nice decorative fence, um, but just improved. Okay, so it won't be a chain. Right now, it's a chain no, link fence. Yeah, so it's going to be, be something a little bit 
there will not be a chain link fence there. It will, um, there's a, the other decorative ones seem more common. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah. And again, Mr. Fitzsimmons asked, asked a couple of questions that I had concerning, uh, you know, the, the trash, uh, the trash pickup. And a trash truck can make it, obviously it can, can make it underneath the, uh, underneath the building when it's exiting. No. So the trash one will go in, will, the only one that would have to go against the flow. So, uh, sorry, I'll repeat. The trash, uh, the vehicle will not be able to exit and follow the plan that we are proposing. So there are exceptions. So the trash vehicle, which would ideally come at earlier hours, would have to exit where he entered. Okay. And then just one last thing. You know, one of the, uh, looking at the memo that we received from our, uh, our town engineer, talks about, you know, uh, access. Could you just speak of this, this access, access easement to be granted in favor of Town Center Condominium over land of 8 Wallace LLC. Could you just explain that, please? Yeah. So, and, and this is, we discussed briefly, we're talking about the area marked in red on the plan. Um, so the, the gold three access points are set where we have a dedicated entrance and one will be exit, possibly a second one periodically. On Wallace, we're going to have an emergency access only and it would be in favor so that, of... So that, again, that, that's what the... Uh, yes. Th that's, what, that's what the access easement, that's what our, our town, plan, uh, excuse me, our town engineering is referring to. Yes. Because that property, that initially was what the parking space is for, was it 8 Wallace, and then you've kind of reconfigured or it was the dumpster or something there, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And so, right. yeah. No, that answers the question. All right, thank you. And I think that uh, that does it for me. Uh, Mr. Pacini, would you uh, like to make any uh, comments? Uh, yes, on the, I was just uh, curious about the construction sequence since it is a shared parking lot. How long do you anticipate construction to take and how do you plan on uh, juggling the construction with the people coming in and out and everything else, I guess? <laughs> so actually at this point, we have done most of the underground work. Um, the utilities that we talked about, they traverse the entire site. There's a dedicated uh, fire line that has to be installed with one of the buildings. Beyond that, we expect the lot to be graveled by September, mid-September at the latest, where there'll be a base, it'll be compacted, and they'll be driving. All the utilities, we had to put a transformer on the site. So, and the transformer, which is located on the plan, is near where the proposed building is. So any future hookups are right adjacent to uh, where our development pad is. So we hope by mid-September that we're at a place where it's clean, level, and we'll begin that flow, even though construction will be ongoing with that back building. Thank you. Does that take care of that, Mr. Puccini? Uh, yes. Okay, at this point in time, this is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public that would like to uh, comment on the application? If you would, please come forward with your uh, name and address. And we'll start with this gentleman over here. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Vogt. I live at 529 North Main Street. Sir, if you could please come just a little bit closer to the microphone so sure. you can get picked up. I can get rid of this thing, too. <laughs> I'd like to speak in favor of the application. Vincenzo has reached out to all the abutting property owners, Michael Tishia, Rick Termini, and Dick Kaplan to discuss the plans for the property to gauge if there was any concerns about what was proposing. I was in attendance with a bunch of those meetings. Um, there were no, the discussion centering around the building parking and uh, uh, public flow, the only concern voiced was the possibility of adding a mirror at the parking lot and exit because you know, there's a lot of skateboarders if you guys notice and things like that. So a little bit of visibility issue from time to time, but uh, I think that could be addressed with a mirror. Um, Vincenzo and his family have been building quality housing in town, uh, reflective of the current and future needs of the community. The design of the parcel will bring more people to the town center, stimulate business and increase pedestrian traffic through downtown, which is what the town plan encourages. Additional will bring additional town uh, revenue. That's it, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public like to comment on the application? Joan Ives Parisi. I'm 
Also speaking for my husband, Robert Parisi, 23 East Main Street in Wallingford. We just want to say that we are definitely in favor of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Other members of the public? Seeing none, I guess I would bring it uh, back first to the commission if anybody would like to make any final comments uh, before I look to close the public hearing. Uh, seeing none, Mr. Dean Natale, would you like to make any further comments on the application? Certainly, you're, you're not compelled to. No, I, I, I just, um, uh, you know, Sam Sargent uh, was at the la uh, couldn't be here. We appreciate the work and the effort that he has um, contributed to this project. And um, but otherwise, um, uh, that's it. Thank you. Any uh, members of your team would like to make any comments? <laughs> <laughs> At this point in time, seeing that there's uh, no further comments uh, from the applicant, the public, uh, or the commission, at this point in time, I'd entertain a uh, motion to close our public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we close the public hearing for special permit residential building, Di Natale 350 Center Street, application 404-22. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, voting beginning with Mr. Uh, Cohan. Yes. 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 And yes, uh, now I'd entertain a motion on the application. Thanks to the wonderful uh, presentation by the two boys. I, gentlemen, 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 my bad. Uh, they did a great job. Um, I make a motion that we approve application 404-22, special permit request for Dina Tally, located at 350 Center Street, to construct an eight unit residential building and decrease minimum parking requirements on plans entitled Site Plan Town Center Condominium, 350 Center Street, Wallingford, Connecticut, dated March 8, 2022, and revised to June 8, 2022, subject to the following. One, comments from the fire marshal's office, dated 5-11-2022. Two, comments in interoffer memorandum from junior engineer Scott Shipman to the Planning and Zoning Department, dated June 2nd, 2022. Three, comments from uh, Allison Kapuzinski, town engineer, dated June 24th, 2022. Four, that an emergency access, eas access easement is granted from in favor of town center condominium over land of 8 Wallace Ave, LLC. Five, an erosion and sediment control bond in the amount of $2,500, six, six <laughs> copies of the approved final plan forward to the planning and zoning office, and seven, add uh, square footage and uh, dimensions of final plan for all three stories. Thank you. Thank you, we have a uh, motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning with Mr. Cohan. Yes. 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 And yes, your application has been approved. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Brings us to our uh, next item. It's continuation of a public hearing. It's a special permit car watch for G. Gallo at uh, 654 North Colony Road. While the applicant's coming forward to begin uh, his presentation, uh, Mr. Allenson, would you please note all the additional correspondence for the record? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, additional correspondence is a memorandum from Janice Small, Corporation Council, dated July 6th, 2022. And correspondence from Erkan Selick, Colony Diner Restaurant, dated date of receipt, July 11th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Allenson. At this point in time, would the applicant uh, continue with uh, its presentation on the, uh, on the application? after they introduce themselves. For the record, I'm Lachlan, Jim Lachlan, an attorney here in town with my office at 221 North Main Street. I'm Matt Brown uh, with Barton and LeJudis, engineer for the project. And I am the applicant, Jerry Gallo, 15 Shanty Place, Tallinn, Connecticut. Ready to, begin? Ready to begin? Absolutely. Okay. If you make sure, sir, that you have that microphone pulled yes. close to you. Thank you. This good? That's great. All right. Thank you for your time this evening. Uh, 
Sorry we had to come back. It's such a beautiful night. We, maybe we should have met at the site. It would have been nice. Um, our team, um, particularly Matt and Jim here, have done an excellent job preparing this application. And uh, I, I want to thank them for their efforts. I'd like to thank the town, um, town officials. Kevin and Amy have been a, a, a big asset in helping us navigate the regulations. Um, And they did an excellent job last month walking you through the application. So we really don't have much to add this evening, okay? Um, the, the town attorney sent a memo that, in our opinion, answers your questions, effectively clearing the way for an approval and confirming that we do not need uh, any variances as raised by Attorney Lee. Um, I hope you can act in favor of our application. I look forward to becoming a part of the Wallingford community. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, sir. Anyone else that would like to uh, speak from the app for the applicant, or is that there's if there's anything in response, um, we would like an opportunity to respond. But I think the record is full of of good data um, from our last meeting. Okay, thank you, Commission members. With uh, questions, comments for the uh, the application or on the app on the application. Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I think last month our biggest uh, hang up uh, was whether or not um, we were allowed to proceed with this because it is a non conforming site. And there was a lot of questions about <clears throat> some of the uh, legal precedence, I guess, uh, as far as tearing buildings down and, um, you know, redoing this site. And Attorney Small came back with a pretty extensive opinion, <clears throat> citing uh, several examples of case law where <clears throat> this uh, application would be allowed under our existing regulations and uh, case law. So I think for me that really clears up the um, most significant issue we had last month. Um, one of the other issues that seemed to be on a lot of folks' mind were the number of uh, vacuums at the site. And <clears throat> at the last meeting I stated that uh, um, Mr. Gallo is, is the business person, you know, he knows what he, he needs, he knows what he wants as far as his numbers, and, you know, that fact that he is the businessman and, you know, wanted a certain number uh, was okay with me. You know, I'm, I'm not running the business, um, so you know what you need, and I was okay with those numbers. Um, and I, I think, you know, again, based on overall comments last month, it, this does um, m not totally eliminate the nonconformity, but it, it certainly improves, you know, what's on the site now. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Other commission members? Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would uh, support uh, Commissioner Cohen's um, comments. I, I think um, the memo we received from the Corporation Council on the day of July 6th um, did further clarify uh, for me uh, the issue related to the nonconformities. You know, in, in, in essence, um, based upon her memo and research regarding Connecticut General Statutes as well as case law, um, laws have changed, and, and, and my um, Comments last month were geared towards um, the old law and old regulations, uh, which did say that, you know, once a non-conformant use building or structure uh, was abandoned, that anything built new would have to conform. And, and I understand, I think it's in the last five years, um, the regulations and, and uh, statutes have changed to say um, that um, 
a regulation cannot prohibit the continuation of any non-conforming use building or structure and a regulation cannot require a special permit or special special exception for any continuation of such non-conformity so um, it essentially says the regulation cannot terminate the non-conformities slowly uh, excuse me solely based upon non-use so um, I, I think the, the further clarification from the Corporation Council addressed my primary issue related to the nonconformities, um, you know, and, and the fact that you had indicated that the plan was to remove the building and build new. Um, there still would be nonconforming, um, nonconformity on the site, but it would be less intense. Is that is that your understanding as well? Yes, Mr. Fitzsimmons, okay. we're reducing the nonconformity 69%. Okay, um, then believe it or not, I, I'd like to talk about the vacuums. And, and I guess my concern on the vacuums is I just, and, and I, you know, in the big picture, you know, it's, it's, I, I get it's 22, you know, as you know, we have car washes, a number of them in town. Um, and I, I just, I'm having a tough time visualizing a car wash with a single bay not generating significant traffic with the lure of a free vacuum. And, and I say that because Route 5 is a unique area, right? It, 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 there's certain areas of Route 5 that have definitely shown improvements. My concern is the traffic and the unique site here. And I know what the information shows. I know what you've presented um, regarding traffic study information related to a single bay car wash. And, you know, we have a number of car washes. I think of the one in Yale Avenue. I think of there's several on Route 5. There's one over on, on South Turnpike. Um, you know, this time of year, they're not generating the volume that they do in the, in the winter, you know, so to speak. So I'm just trying to visualize what this might look like in the winter. But, but again, I think the concern is I don't think that the traffic Ice T guide or the book that talks about the traffic and expected flow addressed the number of vacuums. Could you again explain for me on the record why you feel the need for 23? Yes. Let's um, let's in order to help explain the need for the 23 vacuums. Let's go to the queuing, okay? And if you'd like, I can go up to the diagram and show you. Would you like that? works thank you so if we look at the queuing here okay between all these cars we have spacing for approximately 30 vehicles of queuing that's a rare occurrence okay but we had to build the site for the maximum volume okay you don't want it customers are gonna leave they're gonna go to here the vacuums are full they're gonna say oh I went they advertise free vacuums but I couldn't get a free vacuum Okay, if the vacuums are all full. That's, it just leaves, people leave with a negative taste in their mouth. Vacuums will not be an issue. There is a formula that the engineers use to develop, okay, how many vacuums you have. It actually comes up with 22 vacuums, and the 23rd vacuum, a lot of sites don't add a handicap vacuum. Okay, they have a handicap parking spot, but not a specific handicap vacuum. This is a, a specific handicap vacuum. Okay, it's a lower vacuum, easier for them to reach. Okay, so this whole site, trust me, I don't want to spend the extra money on vacuums if we didn't have to spend the extra money on vacuums. Okay, you're not, these vacuums are going to blend in. I, I think I spoke to Mr. Um, Pagini about this, and he said he looked up our site, uh, our Vernon location, on Google earth or maps whatever it was and he's like the vacuums just blend in and they do they blend in you do not see the vacuums 
And I know you asked, well, I'm showing this picture with no cars in it. This is when we opened. This is like, I don't even think we were open when we had these out, okay? This is from, in peak COVID, by the way, okay? Which is, you notice, we actually blocked off every other vacuum during, during this time, okay? But these vacuums are silver, they blend right in. You're not gonna see them, it's, it's, it's not gonna be an issue. I assure you that. And I can also assure you, as a business person who runs a business, they're important to have, very important. I hope I helped satisfy your concern. Thank you, thank you. And, and my last comment, Mr. Chairman, through you, um, is I was reviewing the minutes. At the last meeting, um, I had expressed, um, had requested information and or the potential for you to show on your plans, but not yet build an inter interconnection to either neighbor. And even though the, the grading on one side it, it, um, right now is prohibitive, the other side is not. Based upon the plan, you had agreed to provide on the plans a, a potential interconnection. That's correct. So if, and is it on just one side? Was it was the agreement on just one side? There's no, currently, there's only one site that was developed under that regulation. And so there's only one right of way coming that way. The other one was LUMS. Okay, hold on. Say that again. The south is LUMS. That was there before the reg. To the north is now, Bobby Wiedemann. Now the diner, correct? Right. You yeah. said LUMS. I'm like, LUMS. wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. And to the north is Bobby Wiedemann's. Right. And that was developed just recently. So that's the only one with a, a through. It could be redeveloped. No, yeah, but I, I think the reason I raise it, the reason I raise it is, um, <clears throat> Toyota was there after, Toyota was there before Dunkin' Donuts. We had Dunkin' Donuts put it in, then Toyota came in, and, and part of it was the idea that anyone who's coming before us, we should request it, so if and when the diner changes or Mr. Wiedemann's project changes, it's on your plan for the potential. Knowing what you have, it's a matter of just putting it on the plan for potential future, if and when things change on either neighboring property, this property would already be conforming by providing the, the requested interconnection. I mean, you know, we, we, we could talk, I mean, you know, um, Key Bank connects, I think, to the bakery next door and Wendy's. I mean, that's, that sense. to get traffic off of Route 5 was always the goal of the regs, believe it or not, you know, to, to, to control the traffic. So this entrance with a traffic light is gold, right? This, this, and this, this facility has a traffic light for people to get in and out. So. Part of it is the interconnection, you know, none of us know what the future would be, but so it would be able to be shown on both sides as a potential future, right? Or is it, or? Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I could also add oh. just one thing to Mr. Fitzsimmons' question, so in answer to that. Speaking of these guys, I, I do my best to listen. Other things about this application that would absorb the busyness that might be generated by the vacuum. It's the dual lanes in the back along Old Colony Road. It's not just the stoplight in front. It's the windy pavement that comes out in the front. It's the vacuums that were extended further south rather than just combining them all in front. Um, all of that adds up to, yes, the stop site is really, really good, but there's other aspects there that will also absorb the traffic on a busy day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Other commission members? Yes, Mr. Hein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me, uh, I'm not voting tonight, and let me just um, start off by saying I'm in favor of the project. Um, but for the record, uh, I do feel it necessary at least um, to point out that I don't, believe that this is as clear-cut a legal issue um, as uh, we may be led to believe. Um, you know, I, I actually did take a look at the statute. Um, and through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Pagini, do we look at this as, uh, what is the non-conformance here? Is it the building, the use, the structure? 
What is the nonconformance on, on this particular property? It's currently the buildings that are in the setbacks and then the parking as well as in the landscaping uh, that's supposed to be 50 feet. So there's currently buildings within the setback as well as parking area within the landscape area uh, on Route 5. Okay. Because what, what they changed in the statute, actually, when you look at the, the language in the statute, it says, such regulations shall not terminate or deem abandoned a nonconforming use. Well, we're not concerned with a nonconforming use. Well, uh, Janice actually, uh, Ms. Small, sorry, <laughs> um, clarified that she said the Supreme Court uses use and building interchangeably. Um, that's what her direct words to me okay. were, so. Um. Okay, well, well, in this particular case, it probably doesn't make a huge difference, but what it says is uh, a nonconforming use, building, or structure, unless the property owner of such use, building, or structure voluntarily discontinues such use, building, or structure, and such discontinuance is accompanied by an intent, and, and here's the important language, by an intent to not reestablish such use, building, or structure. Okay, and, and here we have a building that, and then it goes on to say, and this is what uh, Attorney Small focuses on, the demolition or deconstruction of a nonconforming use building or structure shall not by itself be evidence of such property owner's intent to not reestablish such use, building, or structure. So just because you, you have a structure on a property and you demolish it, we can't look at that, that sole act as it being evidence of an intent not to reestablish that building, that use, building, or structure. Um, And, and so, if it, you know, in, in probably the most common situation, you would have a house that is damaged by a hurricane or something like that, um, and the property owner then has to demolish the house and rebuild it. And under those circumstances, certainly, you, you know, it would make sense. You can't really force the property owner under those circumstances to then have to abide by the regulations. That, that seems obvious. Um, but, he, you know, here we don't really have that situation. Um, what we do have is we have a situation where a, a existing building is being demolished and not reestablished. What you have is you have a building that's being demolished and then a new building, new use, new business being built on top of that. Um, so I don't, I quite frankly don't think that, and then when I, I took a look at the <coughs> OLR bill an analysis for the, um, the change in, in, in uh, the statute, it says that the purpose was to clarify existing laws protections for nonconforming uses. I don't think that that clarifies it at all, um, at least on the, in, in this situation. Um, I think a, 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 a fair argument could be made that, um, that there's no intent to reestablish the existing building or structure. Um, and the, the cases cited uh, by Attorney Small, one was exactly the, the type of situation that I just uh, 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 described uh, where a house had been damaged in a storm, in a hurricane, and um, they were looking to rebuild it, and they were looking to rebuild it in a way that was going to reduce the nonconformities, and the Supreme Court said, you know, you should, you should let the property owner do it. Another one was where you had a, a shed that was nonconforming that was moved to an area that was going to be less nonconforming, and the court said, that's fine too. Um, and both those situations, I think, make a lot of sense. The third one is the one that really, I think, is on point. Um, you had a uh, uh, 
they were looking to de demolish an assembly hall and replace it with a gas station, and the court permitted that. Um, but of course, that was decided before the changes to the statute um, were enacted. So it's not clear whether that, uh, that holding would in fact uh, apply under the current version of the statute. Um, I know I, I've been long-winded, um, and again, I would reiterate that I would approve um, this if I were voting tonight. Uh, but I think, I think, I, I, I just feel it necessary to make clear that I don't think this is a very clear-cut legal issue. I think there's there's uh, a lot of questions, um, and you know, unfortunately, we have to make uh, a decision with language that is not, in my opinion, very clear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hine. Any other commission members? Yeah, Mr. Allenson. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just in response, and, and thank you, Mr. Hine, for um, your analysis. Um, I had brought up Section 8-2 at our last meeting um, because we had received notice of the change when it was before proposed before the legislature. Um, and I, with all due respect, I, I disagree. Um, the issue on this property is existing nonconformities on setbacks and existing nonconformities on landscaping and existing nonconformities on the building structures. The building structure is going to change to be within conformity. The setbacks is gonna be, the nonconformity of the setbacks are going to be reduced and the landscaping is gonna be increased coming closer to being in conformity, which is what I don't think coming closer to, from nonconformity to conformity makes, shows an intent not to reestablish or not to keep a nonconforming use. So I, I think that this does fall within what the statute is trying to protect. I think the applicant is using the benefit of the existing nonconformities and bringing it closer to our regs to be in conformity to the extent possible. So um, I agree with Attorney Small's uh, analysis here, and I think this is exactly what the legislature and the courts in ruling on this legislation have tried to put forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Perrin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I looked at uh, the memo, and you know, the first word thing that hit me was nonconforming use of vested property right. And it seems that and when you keep on reading, you have to, it seems you they require a, a the <clears throat> property owner to discontinue the nonconformity with the intent not to establish it. So until you, and so that until such time as a property owner would do that, and I don't know why they would, it seems that uh, <clears throat> Whatever right, whatever is there before, is just to use, and it can't it can't be extinguished. So that, and I think it's, and and that seems like to wrap up the whole uh, controversy to me. It's, uh, you know, he's trying he's trying to build a building. Building is uh, the property's going to do is less reduces the conformity. Um, so he's not expanding on the conformity, and he is. There's nothing that he has said or is in the record that shows he intended to abandon nonconformity. So I think that uh, this memorandum clearly puts uh, the applicant uh, in a very good position and that um, you know, this just, he has just a very good argument that, uh, for going ahead and, uh, and building this project. Thank you, Mr. Parent. I guess from my perspective, I think one of the nice things about being on this commission is we can all agree to disagree at times. And I think that that's, you know, that's healthy. It shows that people have different viewpoints. 
uh, and, and bring up you know, various points. Uh, from, my, you know, from my perspective, I, uh, I feel very comfortable with uh, what our uh, corporate counsel has sent to us. I think uh, you know, uh, Mr. Allenson has uh, been very much on point as far as his discussion. Uh, as far as my comments, uh, I, to a very large degree, uh, concur with the comments uh, made by Mr. Cohan, uh, you know, concerning, and also Mr. Fitzsimmons, concerning the, the vacuums, uh, as far as not wanting to you know, impede your business, uh, you're the business person, uh, you're, uh, if you feel comfortable, comfortable but feel confident from a business standpoint, you actually need the 22, you know, vacuums. I, I, I would suggest on the uh, south side of the property where it uh, borders the uh, Colony Diner, uh, what are you planning on doing there as far as any type of landscaping, buffering for that property? And if you're not proposing something, what will you propose? We have a landscape plan. Um, and I'm willing to go on record. I will work with the owner of that diner. And if he isn't happy with the screening that he's receiving from that landscaping, I'd be more than happy to plant some evergreens or add additional landscaping to alleviate his concerns. Yeah, because again, when I'm looking at it, I don't see anything that's really buffering that, you know, that property. So I would suggest that uh, there is some screening put in there, some uh, arborvitae, something you know, more than just a couple of deciduous trees, something that actually year round would provide some screening and whatever's decided on, it's, you know, you're not a typical three or four foot tree when it initially goes in, that it's, that it, it, it provides some screening uh, immediately uh, if this property- Absolutely, I'm willing to work with the neighbor on that. Yeah. And the other thing, I know there's been discussion from, you know, from uh, some individuals concerning, you know, the vacuums and the appearance of the vacuums and all of that. Uh, I don't really find it objectionable. I mean, I'm thinking about we have Sonic, and they have their, you know, their their areas where people come in uh, if they're going to eat, uh, you know, outside in their cars. Uh, you know, that's even probably a little bit more closer to the road. I I don't find that ob objectionable. And I'm looking at the uh, the vacuums here. It's, it's nice that they're not red, that they're going to be a, you know, a, I guess a silver color. So as far as those. Uh, you know, standing out that much, I'm not that concerned with that. Uh, so those are basically my comments, and I'll go to Mr. Pagini if you have any final comments that you would like to make before we go out to the public. Uh, yeah, I just want to state that this problem has uh, was a pro considered a problem site by the town from 2003 to 2019 for various outside storage violations and uh, dilapidation of the buildings on site. And I'll just, I won't get into a legal argument here, but I just wanted to state that I think there's a lack of case law on this. And I was kind of discussing this with Ms. Small because when you're moving buildings further away from the property lines, I think generally people don't appeal those kinds of things. So um, I think that's why there's probably a lack of legal literature on the subject. Um, but I think in this case, I think it's up to the commission to to make the best choice possible. Because when you're looking at a variance, you're looking at uh, why, why you should vary the regulations to be further away um, or closer to the property lines, not further away from the property lines. So I think in this case, this is a case where they're moving the buildings away mechanism. Uh, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Puccini. This is a, a public hearing. Any members of the public like to speak on the application, please come forward and name an address. Yes, gentleman in the back. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Timothy Lee, uh, an address 388 Orange Street in New Haven. I'm here tonight on behalf of Scrubbing Bubbles. As the commission is aware, I was here last month. We raised the legal issues. We appreciate the commission making the effort to get the opinion from the town attorney. Uh, I was going to come down here and make the same argument that <laughs> Attorney Hines made uh, to you regarding the interpretation of the, the language in, in the statute. I don't want to belabor the point. He articulated it better than, than I could have. I do agree that the, the language in the statute is not crystal clear. The statute was amended in 2020. There's no case law interpreting the statute. But if you do look at the plain language of the statute, it does say, um, in the, what distinguishes this case is that there's 
a demolition of the existing non-conforming structure. They're not looking to rebuild. If they were looking to rebuild the non-conforming structure, I'd say, hey, if they, the new statute actually allows them to do that. In this case, they're looking to tear down the non-conforming structure and they're looking to build something different. I don't think the statute covers that in this case. So we just want to go on record saying we have a disagreement in terms of the interpretation of the statute. We do appreciate the commission's willingness to seek an opinion from the town attorney. I understand this is not a court of law. Maybe the, the matter will end up there someday. Um, but I, I do think that the articulation from Mr. Himes is really the, we're asking the commission to adopt that as their interpretation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public? Yes. Sir, would you like the microphone? Can I bring, rather him, than can I bring him the microphone? Oh, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, I'm here tonight because I think Wallingford has enough car washes. Very simple. Secondly, uh, I'm concerned about the traffic that's going to. Sir, it, 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 I interrupt just for a second. Name and address, please. You know me, Jim. I'm I know, but if we 23 I, East. Mr. Parisi, I understand. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Really. Could you spell your name, please? 23 <laughs> East Main Street. Okay. I lost this battle, so don't worry. <laughs> but uh, I do want to say that I'm not impressed with the traffic situation down there. And my, my comments are my own observations because I drive that street more times than I care to admit. I never met a traffic study that ever addressed it properly because if it did, we wouldn't have the problems we have down there already. And we still have land to be developed. So, I think he's going to win this. I can tell by your comments, and I respect that. I wish you well with your car wash. Thank you. Maybe someday I'll pop in there when it's not jammed up. But uh, those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parisi. Other members of the public? At this point, I don't see any other members of the public that would like to comment on the application. So before I close the public hearing, I first bring it back to the uh, applicant if uh, the applicant would like to make any, uh, any final comments. Thank you. Just some reflections. Keep in mind we're reducing the nonconformity nearly 70%. It's a tired building. Maybe 100 years ago it was in place, but right now we need a new we need a new business there. We don't know when it's going to happen. It's been long before 2000 that this has been a problem site. We have an experienced operator. There is no data suggesting that this is going to be a problem. Bobby Parisi has been in town for hundreds of years, and I value his opinion. Um, but we have international traffic engineers saying we don't even need a traffic study. We've, we've modified our plan, as discussed, so that the windy driveways and the vacuums further south, outside the setback, two lanes coming in, two entrances, one with a stoplight, one off of Old Colony Road, will absorb any traffic problems, even at the busiest of times. This memo is divided into a couple of parts. First off, no, actually, down toward the bottom of the first page. It talks about case law dating back to the 90s. Remember these laws were only came into effect in the 60s and the 70s. So case law coming from the 90s still apply. The changes to Connecticut General Statute Section 8-2 does nothing more than codify, put into paragraph form, the case law that has developed since the regulation was first established. So of course these cases still apply. Sometimes when there's sheds or gas stations or a storm that destroys a building, there's three dimensions, they move this way. It might be easier to look at it as a sign that is only two dimensional. If you remember the Yale Motor Inn, there was a huge sign that hung over Route 15. Or up by Eastside Package Store, there was a huge sign that hung over 
close to the golf course. Someone coming in and wanting to put in a smaller sign instead of this tall comes in this tall. It makes sense that you would allow a sign this tall when it's replacing a sign that's that tall. That's what this regulation is intending to codify. To say that we have to build our car wash exactly where the existing outdated building is two feet away from Old Colony Road, that forgets the example of a sign being reduced in size. Your regs are written. Case law requires you to reduce a nonconformity when you can, not eliminate. Anyway, I'm off my stump. You guys have more experience than any planning or zoning commission I've worked with. You have more lawyers than you can count. When you take you four guys, you two in the middle, forget about it. You know as well as anybody that in the event of judicial appeal, judicial review of this application, that you have the prerogative to approve it and that it will stand judicial review. So you're staring at a building that's some 150 years old and you're looking at an opportunity to replace it with a state-of-the-art car wash with an applicant who's proven himself and came here with an application like that, you're not going to see another application like this ever again, particularly in a declining economy. What more do you want? I simply ask that you approve this tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Any final comments uh, from, uh, from commission members? Uh, Mr. Pagini, any final comments? I suspect not, but... Uh, no. Good. Uh, at this particular point in time, then, I'd uh, entertain a motion to close our public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we close public hearing for application 405-22, special permit car wash, J. Gallo, 654 North Colony Road. Do we have a uh, second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, voting beginning with uh, Mr. Cohan, please. Yes. 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 And yes, now I'd entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 405-22, special <coughs> permit request for Gallo located at 654 North County Road to construct a car wash facility on plans entitled special permit plans for 654 North County Road dated March 11, 2022 and revised to June 7, 2022, subject to one comments and inner office memorandum from junior engineer Scott Chipman to the planning and zoning department dated 6 uh, 2022. Number two, comments from Allison Kapuzinski, town engineer dated May 16, 2022. Number three, an erosion and sediment control bond in the amount of $8,500. Number four, uh, six copies of the approved plans forwarded to the Planning and Zoning Office. Five, provide easements on final drawings for interconnections on both north and south areas of the plans. And number six, work with the Town Planning Department on more vegetative screening on the southerly property. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan, please. Yes. 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 And yes, your application has been approved. Have a good evening, gentlemen, and thank you very welcome much. Welcome to Wallingford. Time. It brings us to our next item on our agenda. It's a new business, item number three. It's a site plan, site improvements relative to parking at GKN Aerospace slash 14 Research Parkway. The applicant would please come forward to begin its presentation. And uh, Mr. Allenson, if you please note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have an interdepartmental referral, date of receipt April 11th, 2022, from our fire marshal. We have a memo from Aaron O'Hare, our environmental planner, dated April 29th, 2022. We have correspondence from Brian Baker, PE, to Kevin Pagini, town planner, dated June 23rd, 2022. An interdepartmental referral from our fire marshal, date of receipt, April 11th, 2022. A memo from Allison Kapuscinski, our town engineer, to the Planning and Zoning Commission, dated June 29th, 2022. A memorandum from Aaron O'Hare, our environmental planner, dated 
June 30th, 2022. An inter-office memorandum from Eric Kruger, senior engineer, dated June 30th, 2022. Correspondence from Brian Baker, PE, to Allison Kapuscinski, town engineer, dated July 6th, 2022. And I... Excuse me for one second. A revised site plan entitled Permitting Set, date of receipt July 8th, 2022. And a revised site plan, date of receipt June 24th, 2022. I believe that is all. Thank you, Mr. Allison. If the applicant would please uh, introduce himself and uh, begin his presentation. Uh, thank you. For the record, Brian Baker with Civil One, uh, licensed engineer in the state of Connecticut. Uh, I'm here with Keith Gear uh, from GKN Aerospace. Uh, we're the engineers who prepared the site plan uh, for their proposed parking expansion. Uh, so we'll go through the, the existing site conditions and then what we're proposing. Uh, well, first off, we had an uh, existing condition survey uh, completed by Tim Wiley uh, recently. Uh, and this is what's at the site uh, currently. We have a 70,000 square foot existing research and development facility, uh, parking uh, along the frontage, the eastern side of the site, an existing detention basin uh, on the east of that parking area, which receives the drainage from all of the existing loading dock uh, par and parking areas. Uh, we're on the corner, it's a, a little over nine acres on the corner of Research Parkway and Carpenter Road. Uh, there is a small wetland pocket in the northeast corner of the site, uh, which was flagged by Ian Cole and, and located uh, by the surveyor for us. Uh, currently, there are 66 uh, parking spaces along the frontage here and in this smaller uh, satellite lot. Uh, what GKN is doing, they also have a facility in Cromwell, and they're changing their operations uh, and moving uh, all the employees from, or majority of the employees from the Cromwell facility here, making internal uh, renovations to the facility, uh, and that change is necessitates more parking uh, for the, the new employees. Uh, so this is the proposed site plan. Uh, again, you see the existing parking area, existing building. The building's not changing. There's no addition to the uh, ex exterior of the building. Uh, we are adding 10 parking spaces down here to the existing satellite lot, and then adding two uh, parking areas internally on the northern uh, portion of the site with an access drive out to Laser Lane, uh, where we have frontage on. So under the zoning regs, based upon the uses, we are required to have 182 uh, parking spaces. Uh, this uh, plan proposes 184. Um, we did our best to stay away from the wetland and the 50-foot wetland regulated area. Uh, so we have the driveway coming in. It also tees up nicely with the existing uh, parking lot access uh, to the south, so we have no activity within that regulated area. We did have to go to wetlands and get a permit from them because they also regulate the detention pond is actually considered a wetlands now, so we created our own problem. <laughs> uh, but the, so what we're doing is uh, the drainage for this existing building goes directly into the detention basin. As I mentioned, the, uh, we also, we are in the watershed protection district. Uh, so the existing, when this site was built, uh, 25 years ago or so, the, uh, the detention system was put in and also a sand filter was put in, which is part of their standard treatment uh, facility or procedures that the water department looks for. So basically, uh, we're going to mimic that and actually create, um, uh, we've got a, a rain garden and infiltration swales, so uh, there's no curbing on this upper parking to promote infiltration and treatment of the stormwater. Any overflow from that comes down into the system into an oil grit separator, 
and then into an expanded sand filter. So the, the sand filter has not been maintained for a number of years. There's trees growing in it. So basically that entire entrance and four bay area is going to get pulled out and rebuilt. Um, and we're also, because we have the additional impervious surface uh, with the new parking areas, we're expanding the eastern side of the detention basin approximately 15 feet towards Research Parkway. Um, and that mitigates all flows, uh, post-development throws, flows through a 100-year uh, design storm. Uh, <clears throat> then the drainage ultimately, after the, it is detained and treated, uh, outflows through a 24-inch pipe to another small water quality basin that's already on site but will be maintained and cleaned out and then out into the existing drainage system in, in Carpenter Road. Um, part of the water treatment requirements is that we provide what's called the water quality volume. I'm sure you've heard of that from the DEP manual. Um, between the rain gardens and the uh, capacity in the sand filter floor bay area, we're at 100, <coughs> 140, excuse me, 184% of what's required. Um, for the uh, water quality volume. <coughs> uh, so this is the landscaping plan. Now note that this parking lot is internal. You won't really see it from Research Parkway or Carpenter. It's stuck behind the building. Uh, and just below the cul-de-sac of Laser Lane, but in accordance with the regulations, we have uh, 23 new trees, uh, one every 50 feet, combination of maples, elms, and, and dogwoods uh, in there along, and then this will all be uh, grass planted uh, strip in that area where I mentioned was the infiltration soil in the rain garden, and then we have another small rain garden uh, here at that northeast corner. Um, lighting, again, it would be internal, nothing would be seen from Carpenter Research, but we do have uh, three new pole locations um, that match what's out there existing, 24 or 25 foot high poles will be full cutoff light fixtures, dark sky compliant. Obviously these ones in the middle will be double headed to, uh, to light both uh, of those um, of the parking areas, the upper and the lower. Um, and with that, uh, we did respond to memos from both uh, the town engineer and the water department. Uh, their engineer looked at it thoroughly. I believe we've addressed everything. Um, if there are any other uh, final comments, we'd certainly be happy to take those, uh, care of those as conditions of approval. There are some comments from the water department that really need to be addressed after after planning and zoning before we go through the building commission as far as uh, interior uh, water usage, additional sewage flows based upon the uh, number of employees, uh, items like that. And obviously we'll have to take care of that before a, a building permit is issued. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. If you have anything related to the business itself, that's why Mr. Gear is here. Thank you, sir. Commission members with uh Questions for the uh, applicant. Mr. Allenson. Just uh, one quick question. Um, our environmental planner noted that the, um, the basins and stormwater management facilities have not been, hadn't been maintained for decades. And in doing this plan, you're gonna be cleaning them out and revamping that. Is there going to be ongoing maintenance to make sure that after today it doesn't go another decades yeah. until there's another site plan review? Yeah, as part of the environmental planner, uh, the, the process through wetlands, there's a very detailed stormwater management plan that gets filed on the land records now, and it has a list of 25 items that are be, to be taken care of and actually has its own map, a little 11 by 17 map that goes along with it. So. The contractor gets it and he knows, okay, go to area number one and clean out that floor bay. Mow the uh, basin berm in area number two. So uh, that's an issue that I understand not only Wallingford, but every town goes through with basins that were approved and, and don't get maintained. But 
uh, you know, now this is going to be a case where it's it's on the record, it's on the land records, and and you know, GCAN is aware that this is going to be uh, at least annual. I think some of the items are biannual, twice a year, uh, need to be maintained, and uh, it's also a requirement of the water department again because we're in the watershed. Thank you. Regular maintenance makes me happy. <laughs> Thank you. Other commission members, Mr. Pagini. Yeah, I just want to say that was part of uh, the new section 4.12 that we passed back in December, so he was subject to, to those requirements. Uh, he is, the application was submitted, like I said before, uh, the effective date of the new watershed interchange regulations, so he is subject to the industrial expansion uh, district regulations, but he is subject to all these stormwater management requirements, so hence the operation and maintenance plan on the land records. Um, and yeah, I just have to say that he uh, kind of went above and beyond a little bit too with, uh, even though he wasn't subject to those WI requirements, which would have uh, made him do, I believe, 25 pervious spaces, I think it was, extra. So uh, he still went above and beyond some of our current requirements, so. Thank you, Mr. Pacini. And from my perspective, I'm supportive of the application. I, I do have just one I guess one comment or just one request. I know the app, our, our town engineer had some various questions uh, that she posed to the, uh, to the applicant. And then the applicant's engineer you know, replied uh, in July, on July 6th with some revised plans. I just want to make certain that our town engineer, in fact, has had uh, the opportunity, if we approve this, that you know, we have the town engineer just uh, review the revised plans, make sure she, or ask her to uh, look at the, uh, the memo that was given by the, uh, uh, by the applicant's engineer to make sure that she's satisfied with, uh, with everything and that, it, that addresses her, you know, all the comments that she had in a satisfactory manner. Sure, and I believe she was sent that memo. I believe she, she's, I don't know if she's responded to it, but she has looked at yeah, it. Yeah, I would just, if we approve it again, i just like just that... Uh, Absolutely. That overview. At this point in time, I assume the applicant has no, uh, no further comments. No. Uh, while it's a public hearing, I noticed that uh, we have no members of the public. So at this particular point in time, I would uh, entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 210-22, site plan approval, a request for GKN Aerospace to construct 48,106 square feet of additional parking at an existing facility on plans entitled GKN Aerospace Permitting Set, dated April 11th, 2022, and revised to July 6th, 2022, with the following. One, comments from Eric Kruger, Senior Engineer, Water and Sewer Division, dated June 30th, 2022, Two comments from Allison Kapuczynski, town engineer, dated June 29th, 2022. Three, inner office memorandum from Aaron O'Hare, environmental planner, dated June 30th, 2022. Number four, an erosion and sediment control bond in the amount of $8,500. And number five, six copies of the approved final plan forward to the planning and zoning office and the town engineer review uh, the July 6, 2022 uh, Civil One, Civil Engineer's memo. Thank you, Mr. Vinoy. We have a uh, motion on the application. Do we have a, uh, do we have a second? second? Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan, please. Yes. 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 Uh, yes, your application has been approved. Have a good evening, sir. Brings us to our next order of business. Uh, it's a uh, Connecticut General Statute, Section 8-24, possible purchase of property, 124 Lindley or Lineley uh, Hall Lane uh, for open space purposes. Uh, and Mr. Pagini, if you would just give us a brief overview of uh, what's being requested. I'll try to make it oh, brief. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> uh, before I do that, Mr. Allison, would you please note all correspondence? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have uh, correspondence from uh, the Office of the Mayor, William W. Dickinson, Jr., dated July 7th, 2022, 
Um, as part of the packet is a, the assessor's card and a map of the property. Thank you, Mr. Allenson. And now, Mr. Pagini. Uh, All right. So uh, I'll try to make this brief. Um, this was a this was a lot that was approved before the adoption of zoning. I believe it was 1953. Um, there was a number of questions surrounding whether or not this was a buildable lot. Um, it was approved as a subdivision back in 1953, so it was technically a buildable lot, but there was no road access, no electrical, uh, basically no way to actually access the site for emergency purposes or building purposes. Uh, and the, just recently, the, the lot was put up for sale, so there's a lot of questions surrounding uh, the legalities of the site and the, you know, the, the building prospects, I guess you could say. Um, so the real estate agent was finally uh, kind of tired of uh, <laughs> going through the process of, of figuring out whether or not it was buildable, so uh, the, I believe she approached the town uh, to, to potentially sell it for open space purposes because it is directly adjacent to the Williams Road parcel, the 95 acre parcel that was um, bought by the town back in, uh, that was brought before the commission back in November. Uh, so this is in the watershed protection area. It's a roughly five acre lot. Uh, it is vacant, uh, it does have woods on it. And I think it would be a great addition uh, for just protection of open space. So the bottom line is a continuous par parcel to an existing uh, town open space. Uh, correct. Commission members, any uh, comments? Seeing none, I guess I would entertain a uh, motion on the uh, on the request. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the. No, it's remanded to the town council. Town council. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we remand the uh, purchase of property at. 124 Linney Hall Lane for open space purposes. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan, please. Yes. 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 And yes. And with that, uh, Mr. Pagini, I will turn over the rest of the meeting to you. Uh, so I included uh, the hazard mitigation plan that Scrog is currently working on uh, with the town at the regional plan that's updated roughly, I believe, every four or five years. Uh, so they, they're looking for public participation, uh, so with a form of a survey. Uh, so if you have any input or would like to share this with uh, the community, uh, I'm going to be posting this in you know, different places around town just to try to get some input from the community. The hazard mitigation plans basically uh, involves hazards uh, and how to mitigate them for flooding, fire, um, earthquakes, uh, storms, uh, that nature. So it uh, just gives a good overview of what to, be, what to look for in town and how to mitigate those hazards uh, if they may arise. And we're, we're working by town staff with public works, fire chief, um, town engineer, environmental planner. So we're, we're working from a, a town-wide perspective uh, with Scrog to address uh, any of these issues uh, and maybe point out things that they may not be aware of uh, from the previous plan. And that was pretty much it. If you have questions, you could feel free to ask or email. Anyone have any? Excuse me, any commission members, any questions? Yes, Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> it's just really a comment that, uh, you know, this, this came up uh, before, you know, I'm a, I, and the Scrag meetings for us. And this came up uh, several months ago. And I just wanted to say that uh, th this has real visibility with the state. And, you know, they, they had a couple of folks that uh, um, were really excellent. They, they, they were really enthusiastic about, you know, putting this plan together. It's, it's really important. You know, uh, for, not only for Wallingford, I mean, a lot of the focus is along, along the shorelines and thing. Um, the town's closer to the shoreline, but they, they do have a pretty good team that is working on this. So I, I, I think, you know, the end results are going to be pretty good. And, um, <clears throat> you know, any 
uh, participation from from you know folks in Wallingford would really help out. So this this is really a good good plan. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Anyone else? Moving on. Uh, moving on to administrative approvals. Any uh, comments on any of those? Uh, if not, uh, moving on to ZBA decisions. Let's see. And then the ZBA notice for July 18th. Uh, there is no ZBA meeting in August, just in case any of you were interested in attending. Mr. Fitzsimmons. I have a question uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Variance number six. For Choate Rosemary Hall? Yes. You know, we, because we list, they list the addresses required, the main address, where exactly is this going to be? So it's a brand new building? Yes, it's on the corner of Christian Street and North Elm Street. So directly on the corner. Which corner? Which? Uh, south, the, north, south, the, east, west? The south corner. The south, uh, let me see. I'm trying to think here. What's there now? Southwestern corner, I believe. What? I haven't really reviewed the plan yet, but I'm going off of what I remember. <laughs> what? Uh, what is there right now? I believe it's nothing. I think it's just a empty. Uh, is that the large parking space? The large yes, parking I, where the football field is. That's what I was thinking. I know there's some sort of parking there. They're removing the parking for the building, and they're putting in underground. I know. Yeah, parking I see that they're putting underground. But I'm just curious if that's where, you know, the parking, you know, where the parking is. Well, technically right now that the site where they want to put the building is technically lawn. And then there's it's parking. what? Uh, just like lawn area, just grass and just kind of open. But there, are, there is some parking directly kind of southeast of the site. And they're removing some of that parking. I don't know, I don't have the full site plan yet, but I know for the variance, they want to put it directly on that corner and they want to put it closer to the street because they want to accommodate the underground parking. That's from what I was told in pre-meetings, but I haven't, it hasn't come to planning and zoning yet, so I don't have a full. Yeah, no, I understand it, because I guess, I mean, looking at it, it, on three of the four corners, there's buildings right. on the, you know, on those corners. It looks like, from what I remember, it's just a, there's like a pathway through it, so a, a walking path that's paved, and it's just lawn around it, and then there's some, uh, there's some parking just a little down Christian Street a bit that they're, I guess, removing as part of that plan, but I don't have the plan yet. <laughs> I guess we'll be interested when you see it. Yeah, it sort of is... Close to that, it looks like yeah, football field, soccer field, something. But they're they're taking out that, I believe, and then replacing some things. I don't know the extent of everything, but I know they require a variance because of it's a new uh, admissions building, I believe. So they want it to be front and center from what we're told from the variance application. Okay, I'm not quite sure if that answered everything, but <laughs> well, I. I mean, it, go ahead, Mr. Fitzgerald. If I might, I, I mean, every month we, we get a chance to look at the ZBA agenda. The variance they're looking for is, is quite significant. Mm -hmm. It's a 40, 40 feet are required. Correct. For a front yard, and they're requesting three feet. Three feet. It's a yardstick. I, be, I believe their, uh, their reasoning for that was the topography of that location and their underground parking. They needed to move the building closer to the front setbacks. But I'm not the attorney making the case, but that's what they had uh, come to us with, it, I believe. Okay. Right. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, what, what strikes me about that, though, is the only reason that they need the variance is because they want to build the under, underground, underground parking. parking. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, is not... 
uh, a hardship, in, in my opinion. They're creating their own hardship by wanting to, to build that, that parking lot. But um, I do tend to agree, but uh, I won't. Uh, but I, I, I guess the, the question is what role, I mean, we get these, these um, uh, notices uh, each month. Mm -hmm. And my understanding was that we get them, uh, one, so that we can keep track of what's going on, and mm -hmm. two, if we want to sort of uh, take a position on something mm -hmm. um, that we see coming up. And I guess the question for us is whether that's exactly. something that we want to take a position on um, going yes. into it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really the point. If we want to, mm -hmm. you know, take a position or not. Yeah, and we have yes. In in the past, we have taken uh, yes. You know, taken positions on this. Uh, you certainly yeah. conveyed to me what your position would be, and then I would write a letter to the ZBA as far as your uh, position on the application. I, I think I guess from my perspective, I think you know this commission has always been very supportive of uh, of Chote and. You know its various applications that it, you know, that they put forward. But uh, looking at the, the three feet versus forty feet, <laughs> I find that to be a very, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. very substantial uh, reduction. And uh, again, Mr. Hine brings up a very good point. The reason why they, as far as a hardship, the reason why they're looking for the variance of this size because they want to do, you know, underground parking. I, I again, I. I I think I have a pretty good idea where the site is, but I think you mentioned that there was some additional parking somewhere else. They mm -hmm. were keeping some parking. I mean, it may very well be that there's other uh, other areas where they could provide more parking, but again, it's, it's their plans. Uh, but again, from my perspective, I think we're looking at this as a, really, a rather significant reduction. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how other commission members may or may not feel or what we would like to do or not do. If I might, Mr. Mr. Sure. Chairman, I, I would certainly agree with you. That's why I, you know, it's a large, it's, it's a large um, part of Wallingford, but that, that is, the, the, the reason I ask is that was, that's a particularly busy intersection with pedestrian crossing, their pedestrian, their students. Mm -hmm. And we've worked hard to address that and, and I know if the, the way you outlined it, 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 it sounds as if they're taking away the walking path that the kids use. Mm -hmm. So I, again, without, and we're not seeing the plan. All we have is this. So, right. you know, I, I would certainly agree with Commissioner Heim. I mean, th this is, the hardship is self-created. So I, absent seeing anything else, I don't know, I wouldn't be in favor of this. Would we like to make a, uh a recommendation or however we uh, however we do it to uh, the uh, ZBA or simply let it rest with them? I think it, it letter. Wanted, what's that? Letter. Letter to the ZBA. I was going to say it's in the minute, but we probably should just say something in regards to the hardship and leave it really at that. Yeah, for, yeah. I think that perhaps that uh, yeah. we, various commission members made comments on this. I, I think that uh, perhaps that would be the uh, you know most uh, most appropriate way to handle it. Here we're right. here, here's the comments from the the discussion from the planning and zoning commission, and yeah. kind of leave it at that. And I believe Mr. Parent though would like to make a comment. I just, <clears throat> yeah, having been on ZBA. Um, <clears throat> A little bit disturbed about this because, you, uh, as I understand you, there's not really much of a hardship. And so, if you grant something this radical, uh, <clears throat> this radical, okay, uh, without much of a hardship being shown, it seems. And uh, I, I would object as a member of ZBA that. Next time you come to situations like that, the president says, hey, look, you did this for these people. How about doing it for me? Because you can, mm -hmm. I think we can obviously see where a property owner would come up with a, you know, with a similar request and with a fairly weak um, hardship. 
And I, and I don't know if we were going to write a letter and that said that, you know. No, I think. Or I, I don't know if the letter would say uh, urging caution or that we're concerned about precedent being set. I mean, that's, you know. Well, I, I, I guess from my perspective, I just, I would just like to see the letter just uh, indicate what was discussed here at, at, yeah. just at the meeting. Okay. Uh, you know, here's the concerns that we have. It's clearly, we don't make ZBA decisions. It's up to the ZBA to, you know, make determinations based upon what's presented to them by the, you know, applicant. I think as Mr. Fitzsimmons indicated, we do not have the plans in front of us. Mm -hmm. We're uh, to some degree looking a little blind at this, right. but based on the information that we have, these are our concerns, and again, it falls with, upon the ZBA after they listen to the applicant, uh, have comments from staff, uh, comments uh, perhaps from the uh, from the public to make a decision if they feel that it's a uh, that there's a valid reasons for granting the uh, the variance. So, to me, I would would just leave it at that. And Mr. Allenson would like to make one final comment. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, sorry about this. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, the, the only thing I wanted to, to tack on here was part of Mr. Fitzsimmons' comments regarding traffic and in line with what Mr. Hines said. By if a variance was granted with a three foot setback for underground parking, is that also self creating a traffic issue? That would be a concern that I would want looked at as well. Well, like seeing, how you, seeing how you stated that, uh, Mr. Pagini will, uh, will include that in, uh, in the letter. And again, we're not looking to, yeah. just so we're clear, we're not looking to impose our will or on, the, on the ZBA. It mm -hmm. clearly falls within their uh, purview. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, then, uh, Mr. Pagini, if you would please move on. Uh, so the enforcement report. Um, Seven new violation files were opened, primarily for keeping of animals and illegal dwelling units. Three files were closed. Uh, one ZBA court case was closed slash finalized. And uh, currently the law department has issued uh, four injunctions on some of those cases. Um, and also uh, we followed up with uh, Iron Horse Equipment with a letter. I spoke to them today. Uh, they claim that they have bought the building next door and they're currently in the process of moving all of their equipment inside that building uh, from correspondence I've had with them today. So, And they know uh, August 1st is the uh, drop dead correct. date on that. And as far as any extensions? Uh, Zero extensions. Yeah. Whether they bought the building or not, they're in the process of moving. They've had adequate time to address it. So Yes. Okay. So uh, August 2nd, uh, citations and fines of $150 will commence. Good. All right, I think that uh, concludes. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. if I could, I have a comment and a question. Oh, absolutely. I'm and sorry. Zoning uh, oh, sure. enforcement I'm, I report. Um, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to, to the town planner. Um, you, know, you know, several months ago, and I know Amy... Uh, has been working on it. Um, and, you know, this uh, summary is great, mm -hmm. but, you know, for me personally, I'd, I'd like a little more detail. Um, and, you know, she was uh, putting together, you know, the database with, with some of the details. Um, so hopefully that's getting, you know, a little closer to uh, yes, being finalized. Uh, once she uh, got over the litigation she was in and then uh, this month she's been working more heavily on that so she hopes to have something Perfect. hopefully in the next couple months <clears throat> yep no pressure just um, you know uh, keep at it and then the last comment I have is um, <laughs> I guess I want to report a zoning violation okay. um, because coming to the meeting tonight and actually I saw this last week two weeks ago, there's already uh, political campaign signs up. And my understanding is that's not. As long as it's on first, as long as, I believe as long as it's on your private property, it's not a value, you can put them up anytime. Um, the, the one that 
I've seen is actually on the roadside of the sidewalk. Okay. Um, so I don't know if that's considered. Uh, I would say, Mr. Public, G, you would uh, private. If you would, uh, I will this, confer. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you would. If you could provide the address, and then Mr. Pagini, if you could look at it, and then also just consult with uh, our corporate counsel. Yeah, because I, I, I thought uh, you know September first was. Yeah, that that was our that that issue came up probably uh, two months ago, a month and a half ago, and I raised that issue with uh, Attorney Small, and she indicated uh, that while our regulations say that uh, the uh, it's under I guess state statute, whatever. Uh, as long as the sign is on private property, uh, it's you can put it out any time you'd like. Yeah. So we're, okay. we're we're currently in the process of revamping the the sign regulations as well. So uh, hopefully soon, once we figure out all the uh, constitutional legalities of the the sign regulations, we'll have something hopefully to present along with nonconformities and some other uh, town center amendments. So we're trying to lump them into to one. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing else. I'd uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn the Wine for Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for Monday, July 11th, 2022. We have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs>